This is question five of our computer application technology or CAT PRAC exam paper one from June 2024 for grade 12s. It's a great paper to use for your revision for practicing for your final exams. And this is our access question or the database question. Just a reminder that there is a link to the other questions in the video description as well as links to the data files and questions that you can try out by yourself and then come back here and check out which questions you struggled with. So let's get stuck into question five. So we're dealing with a database of animals that contains information about animals in the zoo. And we're going to start working with tables. So it says 5.1, edit the 5.1 table in design view. So let's, I've opened up the database already. We can see that there's tables and queries and forms. There's no report. So I've got a funny feeling we're going to create our own report. So let's go into design view of the table 5.1. And the first question, 5.1.1, set a property to the keeper name field that will make sure that the zookeeper is always assigned to an animal enclosure. So that means it must always be assigned. There's only one mark, so it's one property of keeper name. So if I come here, keeper name, it must always be assigned to someone. So it must have a name in it, which means the required part, I'm assuming, will have to be a yes. So we're going to make it definitely, it is required. Simple as that. 5.1.2, change the time field to accept values in the 000 time format. So I'm going to come over here to the time field and we're going to deal with the format. So if I click on format, let's see if the options are available there. There's no format there. Well, the first thing I'm going to take note of is it's, it's short text, but that's our first issue. We must probably make that a date time. And then let's see what options they give us. If I look at the times, we want it as 00. zero. Zero, zero. So just the hours and just the minutes. And if I look at the options over here, that would be a looks like a short time. Now, even though I'm still long, I can still use the short time. So there we go. So that's the format that we're going to use. Then 5.1.3, set the properties of the enclosure field so that it'll display a message should the incorrect information be displayed. So it can only be the text habitat or exhibit. Now to get this message to pop up, that's a validation rule and text. So we're going to go to the enclosure part. There we go. And we're going to insert a validation rule. And you can see there from the message, it can only be the word habitat or exhibit. I'm just going to double check the data. So let's go to normal view. We're going to say yes. Yes, we say yes. And we can see, oh, you see, it's only habitat or exhibit. I'm happy with that. So let's go back here. Enclosure. So my rule is it can only be the word habitat. Make sure we spell it correctly. Or exhibit. And if I click away, it should put double quotes around. And then we're going to have the text. And it must be like that. Only habitat or exhibit must be the text that is displayed. So that's the text that we're going to display if we violate that rule. Only habitat or exhibit. There's no other text. There we go. I'll leave it like that. So let's leave it like that. Let's test it quickly. We can test it over here. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to come here to this part. I'm just going to type in random stuff and click away. Only habitat or exhibit. 5.1. 1.4 the keepers of the animals have a code that they use to access the enclosures so we're going to create an input mask on the x code to accept the data so just a reminder before i get into it if you go right to the bottom of the question paper you will see this page over here where we've got an input mask where we've got all the different characters so you can go look here to see which ones you want to use for input masks so for this input mask for the access code so we're going to come here where's access code there's access code we're going to put an input mask and let's put in the codes that we want they say a letter such as a first letter of their surnames followed so it is a letter so i'm assuming it's a compulsory letter so we're going to put in an l so they're going to put in an l there so you see over here under input mask is where we put in our codes followed by the at symbol so we want the at symbol as it is so we don't want that to conflict with if there's a code that looks like that so when we do that we're going to put it in double quotes at so it puts that text as is so any text that's in double quotes will be as it is and then the last four digits of their cell phone number so that's four compulsory digits so that'll be a if i remember correctly zeros so we're going to put zero zero four zeros and then we're going to come and it's going to ask us for an optional character. So if we look at the example, so it's always a letter followed by an at followed by the, now it could be a dollar sign. It could be an F, it could be nothing, and it could be a letter. So if I go down to my input mask sheet, so we're looking for a optional character. And I wonder if it's connected with that a character. So it could be any character or space. So remember there was a dollar sign. If I use that one, it would not accept the dollar sign. And if I use that one, it would not accept the dollar sign either. So I think the C, capital C, is our best option there. So let's use that one. 
So over here, I'm going to put a C. So the L followed by the at symbol followed by four numbers followed by the letter C, which would represent any character. I think that is correct. So and then we must delete the next feed. So let's click on the next feed over here. And I'm just going to delete that row. And then it's gone. So there we go. I think that's all of the questions done for 5.1. We can now save it and move on to 5.2. So make sure that you save. And we're going to close it. And now move on to 5.2. So open the form 5.2 based on the animals table. So there is our form. I'm going to right click on it and go to design view. And the first thing is says modify the group field so that it displays as follows. So the group must have carnivore, herbivore or omnivore in it. So that's the group over here. So if I actually just go view it at the moment, it's got carnivore, but it doesn't have the other options in it. So let's go back to design view. I'm going to click on that. So let's go look. It's got to do with the data. Where is it getting the data from? It's getting from a table query, but I think it's better that we actually just type in the values. So I'm going to type in a value list. And then what I can do here is I can actually type, if I click on the ellipse, it gives you the option to type in the option. So I can type in the word carnivore. And it says each item must be on a separate line. Press enter. And then we want it herbivore, I think. And then omnivore, not omni man for those of you that watch Invincible. So herbivore, omnivore, carnivore, that's in the right order. And I'm going to click OK. Let's see if it works. So it adds those values, the value list. So let's go back to the view. And if I click on it, there we go. I think it's working. I think that's I'm happy with that. So that was just creating it as a value list. If we said table, that means we've got to get the data from a particular table or query. So that's fine. And then for 5.2.2, the average lifespan of animals is 25 years. Insert a formula in the text box in the form header to determine whether an animal's life is more than the average. So we're going to insert it in a text box. We're going to put a text box in and in the form header and we're going to determine whether the animal's lifetime is more than the average. Display the answer in a yes or no format. Oh, do not use an if function. Ah, okay, so they don't even tell us to use it. Basically, if you ask a question, if I use an example for like Excel, remember Excel and Access are very similar. So if I've got, for example, like 34 over here, I can have a formula that says if this block is greater than 50. So I've made it equal to that particular thing. And if I press enter, it will say false. And if I change this value to 56, it'll now say true. So you can say equals to a question like you do for your if statements, and that will return true or false. And because we want it like a yes, no, we can actually format it as a yes, no. So I think this is actually just going to be like a question that we ask in a text box. Because text box, we can do formulas. So I'm going to come over here and they want, oh, there's 5.2, and they want it to be there. So they've given us the text box already, but we need to give it a question. And we want to get, ask the question equals. So you always start your functions with equals design. And we want to say if the lifespan, that's that value. So we're going to type in lifespan. If there were spaces in the word, you would put square brackets around it. If the lifespan is, does it is include 25? Is 25. So we want to determine if the last is more than the average. So we're going to say greater than 25. And by just doing that and click away, it puts the square brackets around. If we go view it normally, it puts it as a zero because it's 18. But if I go to another record, I wonder if we can get to what, oh, what, there's, it was a 65. And there it was negative one. Okay, so we want it to be like a yes or no. If I remember correctly, they said they want it to be yes or no. So I'm going to click on it and we're going to say, maybe there's a format, but that's the text format. So maybe let's go to format over here. Oh, there's format, let's see if there's an option there. Okay, there's a yes, no. So if we do that and view it, then we can see, ah, oh, then you can see it's yes. That's below average or no, and so on. So that will say yes if their lifespan is greater than 25, but no if it's not. So there we go. I think it's working. I think that's what they want. It was a real question, but just remember you can ask questions as a function, like you say equals what's the question, and that will return true or false. We just format it to yes or no. So I think that's all for that question. We can save it, close it, because I think that's the last bit for the forms. And then we're going to move on to 5.3. Open the 5.3 query. So I'm going to right click on the query and open it in design view. And then it says modify the query to create a list of all the animals that originate from Africa and belong to the carnivore group. Display only the animals and status field. So let's go have a look. So we've got animal. Well, let's look at the data. Let's run. So we've got the animal. We only want the Africa animals and the carnivore one. So we've come here. So the origin must be Africa. So we're going to make origin. The criteria is Africa. And we want the group, if I remember correctly, the group must be carnivore. 
Click away and let's run it. So we can see that there are eight records. They're only Africa, only carnivore. But they also said that we just want to see the animal and the status field. So we don't we want to include the group and the origin, but we just don't want to show them. So we just want to show the animal and the status. So there we go. Those are the animals that are carnivores in Africa. Let's save that and then we can close that. And then we go to 5.4. Open the 5.4 query, which is that one over there. Let's open it in design view. And we want to modify the query to display a list of animals with the status endangered. So let's have a look. So we want the status to be endangered. So that status must be endangered like that. So I'm going to come here to status and I want the status criteria to be endangered and a lifespan of less than 20 years. So it must be endangered and have a lifespan of less than 20 years. So less than, not including 20 years. So the lifespan must be less than 20 years. So let's just see if we're going to get that type of data. So we've got all the endangered animals with a lifespan of less than 20 years. I'm happy with that. Or where no population size has been captured. Okay, so that is quite a challenging one, trying to understand what they want. They want this and this, or this. So I'm not sure if this is actually attached to endangered as well. I've got a funny feeling because of that, that that is a criteria. We want endangered less than 20 years or in a completely new situation, the ones with no population size at all. It's quite difficult to try and interpret. I'm assuming that there is a possibility that they want endangered and less than 20 years or endangered and population size that are captured. But let's just go with it once that or this, which means when we look at population size, we're not even looking at this, which means I can't come here and say the population size has not been entered. So we're basically looking for when it's blank. If I put it there, it's going to look for endangered animals less than 20 last year, and it does not have a population value. We want an or a whole new criteria over here, and we want it where it's not entered, where this is blank, which is is null. Not equals null, but is null. So if you just type it like that, it'll change it if you need to. But so we've got all of the animals that are endangered and have a less than last year, all the, all the blanks. So wherever we see these numbers. I'm assuming it's endangered with less than 20. Endangered less than 20. So there we go. I think that is what they want. I hope that's what they want. I'm going to save that and close that. And then we're going to go to 5.3. Create a query named query 55 based on the animals table. Display the average lifespan of animals according to their group. Format the results to display with one decimal place. Okay. Normally they give us a diagram to show us. So that's a bit difficult to do without a diagram. But let's try it. We're going to create a query. So we're going to come here to create and we're going to go to query design. Okay. We need to add the table. It was based off of the animals table. So I'm going to add the animals table to my list. I can close that here. And we want, they said, we want to display the average lifespan of animals according to their group. So we want lifespan and we want their group. Okay, now I'm going to do group first because we want groups and then average lifespan because that's calculating the lifespan. So I'm going to do the group and then the lifespan. So that's what I'm going to do over there. So we want the average lifespan of the animals according to their group. So if I do just do this and I run it, it's just groups and lifespan. But if I come here and I click on totals over here, I get this group bar row, this total row. And yeah, if I click on, I can actually say the average lifespan. So if I run that, now it's grouping it. Oh, quite big numbers. Grouping it, carnivore, hobbit, omnivore, and the average lifespan for each of those groupings. I think that's what they want. But they also mentioned we must format the results to display to one decimal place. So this blocky over here, if I come here to view, I'm going to click on it. And because all these settings over here, I want the settings to be one decimal place. If I remember correctly, it said one decimal place. Now I've got a funny feeling that's not going to work. You see, it doesn't work. So Mr. Long, why? But you said it was one. Why it's not working? Well, because whenever you set it to one, you must also set the format to fixed or currency, but fixed will be the best when it's just a number. We've got to set it to fixed before you change the decimal place. And if I do that, ah, urethra, I mean Rika, there we've got the average lifespan and it's to one decimal place. I think that is correct. I think that's what they want. I'm going to save it as what was the name? It's a good idea to make sure you always save it according to what they want. Remember the marker is going to be looking for that particular query to mark it. If you name it as something else, they might not think that is your file five query and then you won't get the marks for it. So make sure that you save it as the name that they give you. 
and then our last little bit which i'm assuming is 5.6 yep there's only one more left create a report name that based on the tbl animals to display as follows so let's look we want to display animals bit by bit and we want the border of the group field appears the border of the group fields appears and we want this little image over there okay so it's all displaying the data down like that so i think that's a particular type of report so i'm going to come here to create we're going to use a report harry potter i mean report a wizard you're a wizard harry and then i'm gonna click on it and let's go through the steps so first of all just remember we want it based on tbl animals so i want tbl animals please Boop. tbl animals and which fields do we want to display we want animal origin status behavior ad adapt animal origin status we didn't want population we did want behavior and we wanted adapt and if you remember over here we also wanted the group so I'm going to put in the group. So we only want those ones. We don't want population or lifespan. Let's go next. Is it grouped by anything? So if we look here, I don't think it's grouped by any field. It's not like the carnivores and all the carnivores and herbivores and all. I don't think it's any grouping. So I'm not worried about the groupings. So I'm going to go next. And I don't think there's any sorting that needs to be done. It doesn't look like it needs to be. Let's leave it like it is. I think it's sorted excuse the pen and we're going to go next and now this is the top of it now normally our data goes like down like that but let's just start to look at this column so i think that's the one that they want so if you look here there are the headings and then there's the data following now if i've got column the headings are there and the data's on the side like that so i think it's going to be like this because justified no i think i think it's columnar columnar if that's how you pronounce it and then i'm going to click next and remember, we want the title of a report. Make sure we use the name that they give us so that our markers will get the right name. So they know what to click on. And then let's finish it and see what it looks like. Okay, so ooh, it's, it looks very close to what I want. I'm quite chuffed that we got that far. So if I look here, ah, we can see we've got the head. Oh, that's nice. You've got that. We've got the data like that. Oh, that's good. The only thing we want to do is we want to move the grouping over there. And we want to put this picture over here. I think that's what we still have to do. So let's go and we're not going to print this. We're going to close the print preview. We're in design mode. Now, the first thing I want to take note of is we don't need the actual text for the group. You'll notice there's no text for the group. So I'm going to click on that little block there and I'm going to delete it. But I've still got where the data for the group comes. I'm going to click on that and bring that over here line it up nice over there so there's my group carnivore will be there and then underneath this we're going to put the picture so i'm going to insert a picture so I'll click somewhere else then we're going to insert an image we're going to browse and there are the files for this exam paper and that's the zoo logo if you look here there's the five zoo logo that's the one we want i'm going to click on that and go okay and i'm going to drag it underneath here just so we can get it in i think that's going to be okay make it a bit bigger i don't know if it'll make a difference but we've got our zoo image over there which is like that the only thing i don't like is that we don't have a box around it we removed the label we've added this image but i think we need to put like a little we need to highlight that box if you look at the design view if we go to print preview we've got it so close we just need a box to be around the word carnivore so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on it and then i want a border now we've got all these options over here we can arrange you can come into shape there's nothing about borders that i can see here so i think we're gonna have to come over here to the border of we got this block that's select we got the group and i want a border around it at the moment it's transparent let's make it solid and see what that does if i go view it now Ah, we now have a border around. I think that looks exactly like we want it to look like that. Okay, obviously you can adjust your image, but we have got the image in the detail section. And then we could go down. If we go look here, you can see it follows exactly like it is. I think we've got it spot on, everyone. Well done. Go to design view and always check the mark allocation. So it's seven marks. So we created the report. We gave it the name. We used the right fields. We got the right format. And then we moved the group in, removed the, the label gave it a border, gave it an image. I think we've got everything we need for all the marks. So there we go. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to be done. Now we can move on to the HTML question. Just a reminder, if you're a fan of this channel and this content has helped you, please help the channel out by being a subscriber. Also check out our YouTube channel for computer terms, which is for the theory paper. So it can help you with paper two. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.